Pan-Africanism is a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of solidarity between all people of African descent. Based on a common fate going back to the Atlantic slave trade, the movement extends beyond continental Africans, with a substantial support base among the African diaspora in the Caribbean, Latin America, and the United States. It is based on the belief that unity is vital to economic, social, and political progress and aims to unify and uplift people of African descent. The ideology asserts that the fate of all African peoples and countries are intertwined. At its core Pan-Africanism is a belief that African peoples, both on the continent and in the diaspora, share not merely a common history, but a common destiny. The Organization of African Unity now the African Union was established in 1963 to safeguard the sovereignty and territorial integrity of its member states and to promote global relations within the framework of the United Nations. The African Union Commission has its seat in Addis Ababa and the Pan-African Parliament has its seat in Johannesburg and Midrand. Overview Pan-Africanism stresses the need for «collective self-reliance». Pan-Africanism exists as a governmental and grassroots objective. Pan-African advocates include leaders such as Haile Selassie, Julius Nyerere, Ahmed Sekou Touré, Kwame Nkrumah, Thomas Sankara and Muammar Gaddafi, grassroots organizers such as Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X, academics such as W. E. B. Du Bois, and others in the diaspora. Pan-Africanists believe that solidarity will enable the continent to fulfill its potential to independently provide for all its people. Crucially, an all-African alliance would empower African people globally. The realization of the Pan-African objective would lead to power consolidation in Africa, which would compel a reallocation of global resources, as well as unleashing a fiercer psychological energy and political assertion. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 that would unsettle social and political power structures. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in the Americas. Advocates of Pan-Africanism, i.e., Pan-Africans, or Pan-Africanists, often champion socialist principles and tend to be opposed to external political and economic involvement on the continent. Critics accuse the ideology of homogenizing the experience of people of African descent. They also point to the difficulties of reconciling current divisions within countries on the continent and within communities in the diaspora. History As a philosophy, Pan-Africanism represents the aggregation of the historical, cultural, spiritual, artistic, scientific, and philosophical legacies of Africans from past times to the present. Pan-Africanism as an ethical system traces its origins from ancient times, and promotes values that are the product of the African civilizations and the struggles against slavery, racism, colonialism, and neo-colonialism, alongside a large number of slaves' insurrections. By the end of the 18th century a political movement developed across the Americas, Europe and Africa that sought to weld disparate movements into a network of solidarity, putting an end to oppression. Another important political form of a religious pan-Africanist worldview appeared in the form of Ethiopianism. In London, the Sons of Africa was a political group addressed by Kwabna Atoba Kugoano in the 1791 edition of his book Thoughts and Sentiments on the Evil of Slavery. The group addressed meetings and organized letter-writing campaigns, published campaigning material and visited Parliament. They wrote to figures such as Granville Sharp, William Pitt and other members of the White Abolition Movement, as well as King George III and the Prince of Wales, the future George IV. Modern Pan-Africanism began around the start of the 20th century. The African Association, later renamed the Pan-African Association, was established around 1897 by Henry Sylvester Williams, who organized the first Pan-African Conference in London in 1900. With the independence of Ghana in March 1957, Kwame Nkrumah was elected as the first Prime Minister and President of the state. Nkrumah emerged as a major advocate for the unity of independent Africa. The Ghanaian president embodied a political activist approach to Pan-Africanism as he championed the quest for regional integration of the whole of the African continent. This period represented a golden age of high Pan-African ambitions. 
The continent had experienced revolution and decolonization from Western powers and the narrative of rebirth and solidarity had gained momentum within the Pan-African movement. Nkrumah's Pan-African principles intended for a union between the independent African states upon a recognition of their commonality i.e. suppression under imperialism. Pan-Africanism under Nkrumah evolved past the assumptions of a racially exclusive movement associated with Black Africa, and adopted a political discourse of regional unity in April 1958. Nkrumah hosted the first All-African People's Conference AAPC in Accra, Ghana. The conference invited delegates of political movements and major political leaders. With the exception of South Africa, all independent states of the continent attended, Egypt, Ethiopia, Ghana, Liberia, Libya, Morocco, Tunisia and Sudan. The conference signified a monumental event in the Pan-African movement, as it revealed a political and social union between those considered Arabic states and the black African regions. Further, the conference espoused a common African nationalist identity, among the states, of unity and anti-imperialism. France Fanon, journalist, freedom fighter and a member of the Algerian FLN party attended the conference as a delegate for Algeria. Considering the armed struggle of the FLN against French colonial rule, the attendees of the conference agreed to support the struggle of those states under colonial oppression. This encouraged the commitment of direct involvement in the emancipation of the continent, thus, a fight against colonial pressures on South Africa was declared and the full support of the FLN struggle in Algeria, against French colonial rule." In the years following 1958, Accra Conference also marked the establishment of a new foreign policy of non-alignment as between the US and USSR, and the will to found an African identity in global affairs by advocating a unity between the African states on international relations. This would be based on the Bandung Declaration, the Charter of the UN and on loyalty to UN decisions. In 1959 Nkrumah, President Sekou Touré of Guinea and President William Tubman of Liberia met at Sanakeli and signed the Sanakeli Declaration outlining the principles for the achievement of the unity of independent African states whilst maintaining a national identity and autonomous constitutional structure. The declaration called for a revised understanding of Pan-Africanism and the uniting of the independent states. In 1960, the second All-African People's Conference was held in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The membership of the All-African People's Organization AAPO had increased with the inclusion of the Algerian Provisional Government as they had not yet won independence, Cameroon, Guinea, Nigeria, Somalia and the United Arab Republic. The conference highlighted diverging ideologies within the movement, as Nkrumah's call for a political and economic union between the independent African states gained little agreement. The disagreements following 1960 gave rise to two rival factions within the Pan-African movement, the Casablanca bloc and the Brazzaville bloc. In 1962, Algeria gained independence from French colonial rule and Ahmed Ben Bella assumed presidency. Ben Bella was a strong advocate for Pan-Africanism and an African unity. Following the FLN's armed struggle for liberation, Ben Bella spoke at the UN and espoused for independent Africa's role in providing military and financial support to the African liberation movements opposing apartheid and fighting Portuguese colonialism. In search of a united voice, in 1963 at an African summit conference in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, 32 African states met and established the Organization of African Unity OAU. The creation of the OAU Charter took place at this summit and defines a coordinated effort to raise the standard of living of member states and defend their sovereignty by supporting freedom fighters and decolonization. Thus, was the formation of the African Liberation Committee ALC, during the 1963 summit. Championing the support of liberation movements, was Algeria's President Ben Bella, immediately donated 100 million francs to its finances and was one of the first countries, of the organization to boycott Portuguese and South African goods. In 1969, Algiers hosted the Pan-African Cultural Festival, on July 21 and it continued for 10 days. The festival attracted thousands from African states and the African diaspora, including the Black Panthers. It symbolized the new Pan-African identity, of regions with a shared experience of colonization. 
The festival further strengthened Algeria's president, Boumedine standing in Africa and the Third World. After the death of Kwame Nkrumah in 1972, Muammar Gaddafi assumed the mantle of leader of the Pan Africanist movement and became the most outspoken advocate of African unity, consistently calling, like Nkrumah before him, for the advent of a United States of Africa. In the United States, the term is closely associated with Afrocentrism, an ideology of African-American identity politics that emerged during the civil rights movement of the 1960s to 1970s. Concept As originally conceived by Henry Sylvester Williams although some historians credit the idea to Edward Wilmot Blyden, Pan-Africanism referred to the unity of all continental Africa. During apartheid South Africa there was a Pan-Africanist Congress that dealt with the oppression of Africans in South Africa under apartheid rule. Other Pan-Africanist organizations include, Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association African Communities League, Transafrica and the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Additionally, Pan-Africanism is seen as an endeavor to return to what are deemed by its proponents as singular, traditional African concepts about culture, society, and values. Examples of this include Leopold Seder Senghor's Negritude Movement, and Mobutu Sese Siko's view of authenticité. An important theme running through much Pan-Africanist literature concerns the historical links between different countries on the continent, and the benefits of cooperation as a way of resisting imperialism and colonialism. In the 21st century, some Pan-Africanists aim to address globalization and the problems of environmental justice. For instance, at the conference, Pan-Africanism for a New Generation, held at the University of Oxford, June 2011, Ledham Miti, the current president of the Movement for the Survival of the Agoni People MOSOP, argued that environmental justice movements across the African continent should create horizontal linkages in order to better protect the interests of threatened peoples and the ecological systems in which they are embedded, and upon which their survival depends. Some universities went as far as creating departments of Pan-African studies in the late 1960s. This includes the California State University, where that department was founded in 1969 as a direct reaction to the civil rights movement, and is today dedicated to "...teaching students about the African world experience." To "...demonstrate to the campus and the community the richness, vibrance, diversity, and vitality of African, African American, and Caribbean cultures." And to "...presenting students and the community with an Afrocentric analysis." Of anti-black racism, Syracuse University also offers a master's degree in Pan-African Studies. Topic: <laughs> Pan-African Colors. The flags of numerous states in Africa and of Pan-African groups use green, yellow, and red. This color combination was originally adopted from the 1897 flag of Ethiopia, and was inspired by the fact that Ethiopia is the continent's oldest independent nation. Thus making the Ethiopian green, yellow and red the closest visual representation of Pan-Africanism. This is in comparison to the black nationalist flag, representing political theory centered around the eugenicist caste stratified colonial Americas. The UNIA Universal Negro Improvement Association flag is a tricolor flag consisting of three equal horizontal bands of from top down red, black and green. The UNIA formally adopted it on August 13, 1920, during its month-long convention at Madison Square Garden in New York. Variations of the flag have been used in various countries and territories in Africa and the Americas to represent black nationalist ideologies. Among these are the flags of Malawi, Kenya and St. Kitts and Nevis. Several Pan-African organizations and movements have also often employed the emblematic red, black and green tricolor scheme in variety of contexts. <laughs> Maafa studies Maafa is an aspect of Pan-African studies. The term collectively refers to 500 years of suffering including the present of people of African heritage through slavery, imperialism, colonialism, and other forms of oppression. In this area of study, both the actual history and the legacy of that history are studied as a single discourse. 
The emphasis in the historical narrative is on African agents, as opposed to non-African agents. <laughs> Political parties and organizations In Africa Organization of African Unity, succeeded by the African Union African Unification Front Rassemblement Démocratique Africain All African People's Revolutionary Party Convention People's Party Pan-African Renaissance Economic Freedom Fighters South Africa Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania, South Africa. Topic: In the Caribbean. The Pan-African Affairs Commission for Pan-African Affairs, a unit within the office of the Prime Minister of Barbados. African Society for Cultural Relations with Independent Africa, Guyana. Antigua Caribbean Liberation Movement, Antigua and Barbuda. Clement Payne Movement Barbados Marcus Garvey People's Political Party Jamaica Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League Jamaica Topic In the United Kingdom Pan African Federation Topic In the United States The Council on African Affairs CAA, founded in 1937 by Max Jurgen and Paul Robeson, the CAA was the first major U.S. organization whose focus was on providing pertinent and up-to-date information about Pan-Africanism across the United States, particularly to African Americans. Probably the most successful campaign of the Council was for South African famine relief in 1946. The CAA was hopeful that, following World War II, there would be a move towards Third World independence under the trusteeship of the United Nations. To the CAA's dismay, the proposals introduced by the U.S. government to the conference in April, May 1945 set no clear limits on the duration of colonialism and no motions towards allowing territorial possessions to move towards self-government. Liberal supporters abandoned the CAA, and the federal government cracked down on its operations. In 1953 the CAA was charged with subversion under the McCarran Internal Security Act. Its principal leaders, including Robeson, W. E. B. Du Bois, and Alpheus Hunton were subjected to harassment, indictments, and in the case of Hunton, imprisonment. Under the weight of internal disputes, government repression, and financial hardships, the Council on African Affairs disbanded in 1955. The U.S. organization was founded in 1965 by Maulana Karenga, following the Watts riots. It is based on the synthetic African philosophy of Kawaita, and is perhaps best known for creating Kwanzaa and the Nguzo Saba, seven principles. In the words of its founder and chair, Karenga, the essential task of our organization US has been and remains to provide a philosophy, a set of principles and a program which inspires a personal and social practice that not only satisfies human need but transforms people in the process, making them self-conscious agents of their own life and liberation. Topic: <laughs> Pan-African concepts and philosophies. Afrocentric Pan-Africanism Afrocentric Pan-Africanism is espoused by Kwabena Fahima Shanti in his book The Psychotechnology of Brainwashing, Crucifying Willie Lynch. Another newer movement that has evolved from the early Afrocentric school is the Afrocecal movement or Afrocecaism of Francis Ohanyido, a Nigerian philosopher-poet. Black nationalism is sometimes associated with this form of Pan-Africanism. Kawaida Hip-hop During the past three decades hip-hop has emerged as a powerful force that has partly shaped black identity worldwide. In his 2005 article, 
Hip Hop Turns 30, What You Celebratin For? Greg Tate describes hip hop culture as the product of a pan African state of mind. It is an ethnic enclave, empowerment zone that has served as a foothold for the poorest among us to get a grip on the land of the prosperous. Hip hop unifies those of African descent globally in its movement towards greater economic, social, and political power. Andrina Clay in her article, Keeping It Real Black Youth, Hip Hop Culture, and Black Identity, states that hip hop provides the world with vivid illustrations of black lived experience, creating bonds of black identity across the globe. Hip hop authenticates a black identity, and in doing so, creates a unifying, uplifting force among Africans as Pan Africanism sets out to achieve. Topic: <laughs> Pan African Art. CFESPACO and PAF for Pan African Film Festivals. See African Art. Topic. See also Topic Literature Hakim Adi and Marika Sherwood, Pan-African History, Political Figures from Africa and the Diaspora since 1787, London, Routledgem 2003. Immanuel Geis, Panafricanismus. Zur Geschichte der Decolonisation. Habilitation, Eva, Frankfurt M. Main, 1968, English as, The Pan-African Movement, London, Methuen, 1974, ISBN 0-416-16710-1, and as, The Pan-African Movement. A History of Pan-Africanism in America, Europe and Africa, New York, Africana Publ, 1974, ISBN 0-8419-0161-9. Colin Legum, Pan-Africanism, A Short Political Guide, Revised Edition, New York, Frederick A. Prager, 1965. Tony Martin, Pan-African Connection, From Slavery to Garvey and Beyond, Dover, The Majority Press, 1985.